Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to be taking a look at Conkey, a really cool information system that can be displayed right on your desktop. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, real quick before we get going, I got to give a shout out to these two gentlemen. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so I'm running a base version of uh, Buster. So I've just uh, got Buster flashed over to the card. I've done the updates and the upgrades. And then the only other thing I did was I went ahead and installed uh, the GPS software so that we could read from the GPS. And I'll leave a link to that right up at the top if you want to know how to hook up a GPS to your Raspberry Pi. The only other thing that I've done so far is I did go ahead and install the Pi RDOPC modem just so we could use it to show you guys some stuff uh, when, as we got uh, further along into this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this install. So let's open up our terminal window and let's run sudo apt hyphen get install hyphen y conky c-o-n-k-y and let's go ahead and hit return and give that just a couple of minutes to get installed okay now that that's installed i'm just going to clear the screen now we can go ahead and start it right away with just c-o-n-k-y from uh, the the terminal prompt here and you see that we get uh this little not so nice looking flashing box over there on the left. I think we can do a lot better than that. All right, so back in the terminal window, I'm gonna press Control C to break out of that and end it. Clear that screen. Let's head over to the GitHub site real quick. All right, on the GitHub site, and guys, I'll leave a link to this down in the description below, uh, along with all of the commands that we're gonna be using today. So I just clicked into the Pi scripts, and I'm going to go ahead and click into Conky. So I'm going to skip the Conky RC for just a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this uh, first file here, uh, the Git Frequency. And we'll click the Raw button. And once that loads up, we'll go ahead and go up here and grab the web address that we need. So let's copy that and head back over to the Pi. Now, real quick on the Pi, if you followed uh, my setup instructions, you may have uh, a bin directory already. Since this is a brand new uh, Raspberry Pi, I'm going to go ahead and make that directory with mkdir bin. And let's go ahead and change into that directory. And then let's make another directory and call this conky, C-O-N-K-Y. And we'll move into that directory. And you'll see those are brand new, so they're definitely empty. Once we're in here, let's use our wget command and paste that link that we copied just a second ago off the GitHub site. While that's downloading, let's head back over. I'm just going to use my uh, back arrows in my browser to get back to, well, went back too far, to get back to this page. And let's go ahead and grab this second one here by clicking on it and then clicking on the raw button. Let's grab that address, and let's use our wget command again to paste in that one. And that'll go ahead and download it. While it's downloading, let's go ahead and head back over and get uh, the last one that we need right here. Well, not quite the last one. We still got to get the conky file in a second. But let's grab this one. It's called grid. Copy that address. And let's, one more time, use our wget command. We'll paste in that link we just copied and go ahead and hit return. All right, clearing that screen out, let's list out that directory and you'll see that we have a total of three files. Uh, the git grid, the grid, and the git frequency. Let's do a chmod plus x and then just give it the star right there to say Go ahead and make all of the files in this directory executable. We list those out again, and you'll see that all of those are in green. Now let's go ahead and return to our home directory so we can download one more file. 
So CD space tilde. That'll bring us back to our uh, home directory there. Let's get one more file that we need off of GitHub. All right, this time we're after the Conky RC file. So we'll go ahead and click on it, click on the raw button, and we're going to copy this address. Let's use our wget command for the final time, I do believe. Paste in that last link and go ahead and hit the return key. Now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, with Linux, anything that begins with a dot is a hidden file. So clearing that screen, if we run the ls command, you won't see the file that we just downloaded, but it is there. Uh, and I'll show you guys how to take a look at that. In fact, I think we're done with the terminal window for now. Let's just go ahead and close out of it uh, for the minute. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll just minimize it. I'm going to open up my browser here uh, to browse through the files. I'm in my home directory, which is Pi. I'm going to right click and say show hidden. And now you see a few more files have shown up. I want this .conky RC file right here. Let's right click on that and say text editor. We'll bring that up and blow it up just a little bit. And I'm looking for this right here that says no call. And I'm just going to replace that with my call sign and press Control S to save it. Now, let's go ahead and start Conky. So I'm going to open my terminal window and we'll just run Conky again. And we're going to get some errors. That's okay and that's actually to be expected uh, because we haven't quite gotten everything uh, installed yet but we've got a good uh, working base going now. So I'll move this over just a little bit and you can kind of see what we've got going here. Uh, so you get a couple of clocks here. Now I didn't even bother setting the clock on this Raspberry Pi, so it's still on Zulu time. But if yours was on another time zone, your local time would show up here and then the Zulu time would show up here. Below that, uh, we've got some system information, so the frequency of your CPU, the uptime of uh, your system, the current temperature of your CPU. And then we've got uh, below that CPU usage, memory usage, swap memory usage, and your hard drive or your uh, SD card uh, usage. Below that we've got some networking information. Uh, so IP addresses. Now I'm not connected wirelessly to anything, so you'll see no address there. Uh, but I am connected with Ethernet right now, and that's the address of the Raspberry Pi on Ethernet. Now if you're running the hotspot and you connected to this Pi through the hotspot, uh, you would see all of the devices that were connected up right here. Below that we've got uh, radio tools and digital apps. As each of those uh, starts to run, these will change from red to green. And then the last line here uh, is recent log entries. And again, if you followed uh, along with my tutorials, uh, especially with Pat Menu, it creates a log file that we can display down here. So let's jump back over and let's get a few more things installed. You notice I skipped over grid square and radio frequency. Let's take care of the grid square first. Now, if you're not running um, a GPS uh, or you're not running grid control, I'll show you how to get rid of these lines here in just a second. But for those that are, let's go ahead and I'm just going to press Control Shift T to open a new tab. And the first thing we need to do is we need to install Ruby 2.3. So. I just ran sudo apt-get install hyphen y ruby 2.3 and again guys I'll leave a link to all of these commands down in the description below. This one kind of took off on me in a hurry and went ahead and started installing. Let's give that just a couple of seconds to finish up and we've got to get two gems to go along with ruby installed as well. Okay so the next command we want to run is sudo gem install gpsd underscore client. We'll go ahead and run that one and let it get installed. And then the next one that we need to install will be sudo gem install maidenhead. We'll go ahead and run that one. And now I'm going to jump back over to the conky file, uh, the conky rc file. 
Now the easiest way to make this thing reload, let me minimize that and get it out of the way. Easiest way to make this thing reload is just change something inside of this text file. You can change it and change it right back and hit the Command S button to pull it back up. And now you'll see over here that it says no GPS. And that's because mine probably doesn't have a lock yet. There it goes. And we finally get the grid square listed up there. Now, for radio frequency, that relies on the config file in Pat Menu. So if you have Pat Menu installed, your radio frequency will populate here automatically. If you're not running uh, the Pat Menu system, then we can go in and just take out this line. So let me show you how to take out that line right there. In the Conky RC text file, and I apologize that the writing is so small, but we're going to try to do the best we can here. What we're looking for is this line right here. You'll notice it says radio frequency in it, and then grid square is right above it. We'll go to the beginning of that line, and we'll just put a pound sign there to comment out that radio frequency. Now, when I press Control S to save that file, Conky will go ahead and reload, and now you notice the radio frequency is gone. Since I don't have a rig hooked up to this, I'm not going to be able to get that information right now. Now, something else you might want to see is the log entries. So if we scroll to the very bottom of the file, you'll notice right here, this very last line. If you wanted it, now I don't have a log on this particular machine, so I'm not going to uncomment this. It'll actually uh, cause Conky not to start if this file doesn't exist. But if it existed, you would remove the pound sign at the beginning of that line, and it would start reading this text file here, which is mylog.txt. Now, if you have your own log file, you'll just need to plug in your path to your log file here and make sure you uncomment the beginning of the line. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how uh, this works when we start a new application. So I'm just going to minimize those guys and get them out of the way. And we'll clear this screen. Now I'm going to start pyr.c that I have in this directory here. So pyr.c. 85.15. Now, while I don't have a rig uh, hooked up right now, I do have a sound card just so I could demonstrate the way this works. Now, as soon as I hit the return key, you guys can watch right over here under radio tools. And right here where it says RDOP off, that's going to go green and say RDOP, uh, RDOP active, I believe. And there it is. There's the RDOP active. As soon as I kill the RDOPC modem, that's going to go back to red. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is we want to have Conky start on boot. So again, I'm going to clear that screen out, and we're going to start this with a cron job. So we want to run crontab-e. Now, if this is the first time that you have uh, run cron, it's going to ask you which editor to use. I typically just use nano. So I'm going to choose one here, and it's going to bring me into my cron tab. So I'm going to scroll to the very bottom of this file, and we'll give it a space here. All right, so I'm going to give it a pound sign, because I'm going to make a comment right here that just says start conky at boot. The next line down, we're going to type at reboot space sleep space 20 space, and we're going to give it two ampersands, so two and signs there. Then we'll say export space display, and display has to be all capital equals colon zero. Give it another space, a couple more and signs. And then we're going to give it the path to Conky, which is forward slash USR, forward slash bin, forward slash Conky. And guys, I'll leave this command down uh, in the description below so you can copy and paste this as well. Let's press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out of this. And let's go ahead and make sure that works. So I'm going to give it a reboot command here. We'll give it just a second for that machine to come back up and make sure it started on boot. 
Okay, now the machine has loaded, you'll notice I haven't even changed my default passwords or set up anything. Now remember, we told it to sleep for 20 seconds, so we have to give it uh, 20 seconds or so, and there you go. This will populate over here on the right-hand side. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoy this. This is a really cool little uh, menu system over here to show you what's currently active and give you a bit of information about your system. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.